This is Casey Burns again, flute maker from Kingston, Washington. And I've been demonstrating in part one my, my ornamental turning uh, device here um, that I use for doing engine turning or gaoche engraving. And I'm making a metal disc that will get domed and then inlaid into the end cap for, of one of my flutes. So as I was saying in the previous video, um, uh, various options uh, for rosettes. Um, what I've been doing in terms of making my own is that I've been actually designing them on, on the computer using a program called Fusion 360, which you can download from autodesk.com. And if you're a hobbyist, and if you make less than 100,000 a year, you can get a free license to use the program. And it's a fairly simple to use, um, you know, 3D CAD program. Um, I have a friend here locally, Devin Bodoni, who has a great CNC machine shop. And so he's been machining my designs for me. What we've been using lately are these bronze discs, which I can buy for about seven bucks a piece on eBay uh, when they're available, and and uh, for about thirty bucks a piece after tooling setup, he can make the uh, discs for me. If you're a Lindau lathe owner, he's uh, basically setting these up for with uh, to use on a Lindau type lathe with the two inch bore and the the, the three holes that that uh, Lindau uses. Now I'm almost getting to the end of my design here. I'm going to go to about maybe six millimeters in diameter uh, uh, near the center and then I'm going to change what I'm cutting now into just cutting simple circles to finish this design. I'm, this design is inspired by uh, the sun and its corona or atmosphere. Um, which, which you know, is always inspiring to see. I've seen the corona twice in my life in the two different solar eclipses that I've witnessed, including the one last summer that, that went across North America. The next one is coming in 2024, I think. And we have our place right at the peak of it where the duration is over four minutes all lined up. It goes right over a friend of mine's house. So I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, this is, uh, I'm getting almost to the end of my design here. And I think I'm maybe one more cut. I hope you're appreciating the oscillation motion of this. Uh, I'll point out that no motors are involved. This isn't done entirely by human hands. So I'm now ready to swap out and what you can do in the middle of a design like this is, is put a different um, rosette or pattern engaged. Um, and in this case I have a one of the rosettes is just a simple disc, um, circular disc. So I'm swapping out the touch right now. So in terms of how much this thing costs me, I am spending, you know, 30 bucks a piece plus a setup charge on these rosettes, but that you could do for, you know, you could make a few basic rosettes for on the cheap. Uh, there are some other vendors of ornamental turning rosettes out there. Um, all you have to do is search eBay for those. Um, here's the touch that I was using. I made this myself yesterday out of a piece of Mopani wood. Um, Delrin is used, um, uh, wood with a leather face, or in this case without. This is just a very nice hard wood that's uh, um, one of the heaviest woods from Africa. And let me find my other touch here. Around here, so here it is. And I'm going to set this onto the um, circular rosette. Sorry, you can't see this, but I don't want to move my 
camera because it seems to have a hair trigger. I'm actually using my iPhone at the lowest resolution it'll do so that the files aren't huge um, to um, record this video. And just incandescent lighting. Doing it in the morning, I tried making a video in the evening and there's just too much sunlight streaming through the window and everything was rather washed out and I wanted better contrast. So just for your camera geeks. Um, just about my system here, one of the things that you want is absolutely no flex or robustness. And, you know, I'm planning on rebuilding this. The I'm using some quarter inch aluminum plate for the base, which is, is adequate. But the supper plate, I should have used three eighths or half inch aluminum. Um, and we'll probably swap this out, especially since I want to add a little bit more surface to it to add some capabilities such as a tower on the back side, um, which basically reverses your image. And, you know, the, the tower flexes and stuff, but, you know, I'm not trying to be a clock maker in terms of the, the uh, degree of precision and, and, and such in this. Um, and, you know, the, my results, I think, are absolutely adequate now because I'm just going to be doing simple circles here. There's no need for phasing, so I just have have this style to worry about. So, um, and I'm going to cut over my design just to make a nice intersection. So, okay, so I'm just going to engrave a circle here. Going to advance this too, and just keep doing circles here, which go very very quickly. I'm almost done with this piece. Now, you can find out more about this and see what else I've done, as well as some of my designs, um, which actually I have a way of digitally designing um, various gaoche items and then engraving them into metal using a, uh, a slicer and dicer known as a Silhouette Cameo 3. By going to my Facebook page, it's Casey Burns or Casey.Burns.906 is my Facebook address, and I leave it public so that people don't have to even join Facebook to to look at it. I think um, I'm also going to be, have a an article on my website eventually. There's one there now. You go to CaseyBurnsLutes.com/slash/engine-turning-pdf.pdf. And that shows uh, um, um, some of my earliest attempts at this, including a video that um, uh, one of my classmates, uh, Richard Vanstrom, uh, took and posted on Vimeo. There's a link to that uh, showing uh, me making flute rings on, uh, on a Lindau lathe in the workshop. Let me show you just a few other things. I also use uh, this whole setup to engrave rings sometimes that are mounted on flutes. I use a different spindle and table for those. Here's the uh, spindle assembly, and this is using a Lindau rosette that's set up for pumping. And you can see how everything is mounted with a adapter plate and a spacer, which I'm just using another rosette for that. And what pumping is, is that um, it allows you to engrave on a cylinder. So instead of the motion going in the y-axis, you have motion going in the x-axis. And note that the pattern, instead of being on the edge here, well, it is on the edge here, but these can also be used uh, with a pattern on the face. And these um, allow you to, uh, um, you know, change the direction of movement. And again, I'm changing the, the way it's done with a rocking or pulsating headstock and have another table here where the motion of this is spring-loaded, goes back and forth with a, uh, I'm using a Lindau touch here and the engraver goes like this. So I'm able to engrave, I'll perhaps do another video the next time I'm engraving rings for my flutes showing how that's done. So 
If you have questions, feel free to email me at caseyburnsflutes.com. Um, if you have a lot of questions, you might just want to wait until till I have a little write-up about this. But I just wanted to give you an introduction to the engine turning that I'm doing and, uh, and demonstrate it. Now, the, speech, the final processing on this is that I will, will uh, um, um, dome it using a dapping die. Um, I use a wooden dapping die, which doesn't mar the, the finish. And then um, usually after it is glued into the end cap, I'll stick that on the lathe and running at high velocity, just touch it with some 600 grit steel wool and that deburs it. And, and other than that, I don't do any polishing of, of the item. So let's see what we created here. proper tool. I lost my other one, so I'm using it for a little bit. So that's exactly what I want. I'm finding that this work is hard to photograph. I'll show you a few to end. I'll show you a few of the practice pieces that I've done in the last few days. One of the things that's nice about this type of engraving is the what's called chatoyancy or the optical effects of of, uh, of these lines. These have already been domed. Here's a practice piece made out of a 35 millimeter disc using a similar pattern, and um, you know, trying out different rosettes to see what I like. The kind of the pattern du jour. Uh, now, what can you do with these things? Um, these are my practice pieces in copper. What I do is that I put a little pin on the back of them, you know, with a little clip, and then you can wear them on 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 your shirt or hat or collars and stuff like cufflinks and and such. And people love them. Um, uh, the inch and a half discs. I'm making some for a friend who uh, turns wooden boxes, and he'll use these on the lids of the boxes. And I'm sure that. One can find thousands of use for this. It's just making pretty things, the earrings um, and such. I've had requests for, for such items and stuff. And there are a few geoshayers out there, um, such as Michael Dorsa, who make a living at it. So anyway, it's a fun craft. I'm showing you how to do it without breaking the bank. And uh, I encourage you to try. So uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video.